So how do you paint straight lines on your baseboard trim? Use the right brush and control it. Let me show you what I mean. Hi, this is Spencer Colgan and welcome back to my channel on painting and wallpapering. Now, many of you are do-it-yourselfers who watch my channel and you paint your own trim. I'm painting trim right now. Let me, I decide, let me do a quick video so that the folks who watch my channel can get a quick tip on doing what many do-it-yourselfers do every weekend. So I'm hanging a mural. It's a hundred year old house. I don't know how old the trim is, but it's old. It's got thick paint on it. And it's got what's called old house charm, right? So in order to, this is a very uh, taut wallpaper product. It doesn't give, it doesn't stretch. And so I'm limited to the edge that the wood trim gives me. In other words, if I had a vinyl, I could stretch the wallpaper and make the wallpaper more straight. But since uh, a vinyl would stretch and paper doesn't, well, I have to go with the edge of the wall covering, which means this. If you look close, my wallpaper yields to the straightness or lack of straightness in the trim. Do you know what I mean? In other words, if I had, let's exaggerate the situation with an analogy. Let's say you took a hard cover off of a hard cover book and you tried to glue it to the wall, meeting the trim. Now you get what I'm trying to say. Well, the hard cover is not going to conform or um, what am I trying to say? It's not going to fill in all of the dips because it's so, it's so hard. Well, this wall covering is a very hard product. And although it doesn't tear, it doesn't stretch. For example, you can see a lip here, right? But when you get over here, there's no lip. There's no lip there. So what I'm doing with my brush is I'm creating an illusion of sorts. You see where there's no lip? I'm going to create an illusion that there is a lip by making the paint in this area right here come up a bit. And so the video will be to show you how to paint trim. Even though what I'm doing is a wallpaper trick. It's for paper hangers who want to perfect the job. And if you're a do-it-yourself or if you're painting, this video will help you. I don't care if you don't have wallpaper on your wall. What I'm showing you is how to use the brush when you're painting trim. Rule number one, don't talk too much while you're doing it. I'll tell you why. Because when you talk, you're creating movement in your body that will affect Now, rule number one, get the right brush. Go into the store, if you're in the continental US, uh, for trim, you want a three inch angle sash brush. I highly recommend Wooster Pro and Purdy, medium stiff or even soft. Okay. Uh, they're all 
I hate to say this, but it, it, it's generally true. If it's about $20 in 2024, it's a good brush, most probably. Okay? Because I'm not going to tell you that you have to get a Wooster Pro or a Purdy. No. But you'll feel it. Go to the, go to the Wooster Pro, feel the, feel the brush, take it out of the jacket, and feel it. And then feel the one that you think you're going to get a good deal on. If it doesn't feel soft and, and beautiful as the Wooster or the Purdy, don't get it. Now, imagine that you don't have wallpaper and you just have paint here, okay? So now I'm talking to anyone who is looking to paint his or her trim. This is what you're going to do. You're dipping your brush. Number one, get the right brush. Number two, the manner in which I hold the brush for the different application procedures is important. For example, this is one procedure, what I'm doing right now. Okay? I'm holding the brush by the barrel. I have better control. Look, secondly, look at the angle of the filaments on the wall. I'm not doing this, and I'm not doing this, but I am doing this. And I got my head over the, the brush, looking down at it. And you can see that not all of this brush is touching the trim. And my brush is not loaded with paint, is it? It's not. Let's show you again. I dip it in a half an inch. I discharge the paint below the surface where I'm painting. I don't want all of that paint up onto the, the wall. Now, with only about 10 inches of surface, I take the brush and I gently, I'm not on the wall yet, I'm not there. I gently bring the filaments up onto the surface I'm looking to color. Okay? You don't need a pro. You don't need a pro. Let's face it, let's be honest. I work in a lot of houses. The pro shows up late. He's got alcohol on his breath. He was always stuck in traffic. Uh, I, I, I had, I, I was behind, you know what happened? And this is a professional. Okay, now watch this. I'm not covering all of the surface I want to cover. And why is that? Because I've exhausted the left to right stroke. It's not getting the paint into that area that you see there. So now I have to start on the right and go left. I'm reversing the brush in this procedure and I'm going to I'm going up onto the surface like a ramp. Now what you can't see behind you is my body. And I'm moving my body with the brush. In other words, watch, my arm is not doing this. What you're seeing is my arm doing this because I'm moving my body. Do you understand the difference? The more you extend your arm, the more you're gonna get it on the wall. Your body needs to be right in front of the surface you're painting and not much extended. Left to right. Right to left. Do 
Tip number three, is it better to go slow or fast? You must move quickly. You can paint straighter by moving quickly than you can if you were to slow down. Let me show you. Let's make believe that this is my threshold I'm looking to paint. I don't want to go up there, watch this. Your heart's beating, your hand's getting tired. I'm going up, I'm going down, no good. Now let's do it fast. Watch this. If I can do it, you can do it. Don't say, I can't do it. I can't do it, I need a professional. Well, then you can deal with the guy. Oh, I, you know what happened? I was behind the truck. Now we got iPhones and Androids. Where you stuck, buddy? Uh, I'm stuck on the Belt Parkway. Where about? Cropsy Avenue, why? I'm looking on Smart Time right now and I don't see any traffic. Uh, uh. It's just one example. It's just one example. All right, be quiet. Don't talk right now. Shh. Don't talk. Shush. Don't say a word. My body's moving with the brush. My body's moving the other way with the brush. My arm is not, the joint is not moving at all. My body is moving with my arm. My brush is moving with my arm. Therefore, I'm getting the best out of the movement of the brush. You say, oh, I, I enlarged the video. You got it on the wallpaper. That's because my trim and my paper do not give me a straight line. Remember I told you I'm going to create an illusion. That means I have to bring the paint a sixteenth of an inch up to the wall. Getting my paper just a little wet. Shut your mouth. Don't say anything. Don't tell anybody. Okay. This guy's a joker. Who is this guy? Now, tip number four. Control your breathing. <laughs> Get it all out. <sighs> okay, ready? <sighs> Go. Spencer, I love your videos. I truly do. I watch them. Last time, I have to admit, I had a, a bag of popcorn. And I was watching your videos for like 25 minutes. And my mother-in-law, she came in. And she said, what are you doing? Let's listening to this guy all the time. And I said, you know what I'm doing? I'm learning how to paint. And I just love your videos. And I watch every single one of them. Pero... What kind of brush do I use? You're kidding me, right? No, what kind of brush should I use for this? I gave that answer in the first two minutes of the video. 
Oh, I got a dog and I had to take the dog out for a walk and then I left the video playing. No, no, no. Don't lie. You don't watch my videos. You watched a little bit of them and you're lying to me. You're right, I am lying. But what kind of brush do I use? I'm not telling you. You lie. I don't make these videos for fun. I don't make them for fun. Okay. Why you gotta be like that? But why you gotta be like that? Back in the day, I was a cop, a long time ago. And uh, we used to have to ask people certain questions about, do you have tattoos? Do you have an alias? What's your address? Do you have a dependent adult at home? Do you have dogs that need to be walked or fed? Seriously, no, no, no exaggeration. You know, because the police care about you. Okay? They care about you. They care about your pets too. Sir, do you have any pets at home? You let a prisoner know that you care about his pets. He's gonna tell you he's got a jungle in his house. He wants to go home. I got a parrot who's diabetic. I got a dog who's blind. My cat is an emotionally disturbed animal. He only, he's only calm when I'm home. So I used to try to skip the questions. Anyway, I got to question number 16 on the online booking arrest sheet. And I said, ma'am, what is your ethnicity? Now, at the time, in 1993, there was only, uh, uh, there was only about three or four. Okay, now I'm not gonna get into what they were. You could imagine. You could imagine. So, you know, basic ethnicity. What's your ethnicity? She says, Psst, I'm a Chocolatina. I, I, seriously, I said, what? She said, Chocolatina. I said, what is a Chocolatina? What's a chocolatina? Are you kidding me? A chocolatina! So now I was new and I didn't want to say anything. So I'm looking on this sheet and I see white, black, Hispanic, Asian, American Indian, and other. That's all I saw. So I said, ma'am, um, <clears throat> I don't see that on my sheet. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Choco Latina. So guess what I did? I was a bit of a wise guy when I was a cop. This is what I did. So they had four or five boxes. I put, I took my pen. Yeah, I had to use black pens at the time. And I made a box. I made a box on a carbon copy sheet of paper. And I put six. Choco, C-H-O-C-O, -O, Latina. And nobody ever said anything to me about it. I thought that was pretty cool. Like, I thought that was so, so cool. I'm going to invent a box. You know? I mean, hey, she's Choco Latina. What am I going to do? Tell her she's not? No, you're not, man. That's what she is. What do you think about that? Okay, so 
I hope you had a little laughter. And I hope you understand about breathing and its impact on straight lines, speed and its impact on straight lines, good brush and its impact on straight lines, uh, bodily control, movement, etc., and its impact on straight lines. The rest is in your hands, folks. Remember, you can do this. You don't need a contractor who gets stuck in traffic. Now, if you see any imperfections in the wallpaper, the wallpaper's not done, particularly with regard to the lines. We have to color them in. <clears throat> but I thought that the most noticeable thing is the trim line. If, if uh, you know, people see this, they say, hey, it's not straight. But now it is. Thanks for watching. See you later.